Guten Tag fellow travelers, welcome back to another episode of Nomad Travel Adventures. This is Simon here, and today I'm going to be taking you through one of my favorite cities in all of Europe, Berlin. And I am going to be joined by a special guest. Hello. Yeah, that's my little sister Angie. She's going to be tagging along with us through most of this trip. So um, today we're basically going to take you through some of the best things to see while you're in Berlin. The first destination that we're going to go to is actually the East Side Gallery. Now this is um, a part of the Berlin Wall that still stands today and it's got a lot of cool graffiti on it. So let's go check it out. So this time my journey took me to the eclectic city of Berlin, Germany. This is one of my top cities that you should visit because it's got a lot to see. We started off by going to the East Side Gallery Wall Museum near where we were staying. The East Side Gallery is basically an international memorial for freedom. It is a 1,316 meter long section of the original Berlin Wall, which closed the border to West Berlin but it's gotten a makeover. This section of the wall now boasts artworks from all around the world expressing their freedom of speech. From political statements to really modern and abstract art, you can find your favorite mural and take a moment for a photo op. Right in front of the Mercedes-Benz Arena, you can enjoy beautiful scenery as you walk through the wall. Tourists from all walks of life come to explore the wall and its many murals. This one takes a bit of time to really see, especially if you stop and really appreciate the murals. So plan on spending about 30 minutes to an hour here. Don't worry though, this is a really fun tourist attraction that will keep you entertained. Half the time, you'll be trying to figure out exactly what each artist is trying to say as some of them just seem out of this world. A colorful way to start out the day, we were just getting started. Okay, so you guys got to see a little bit of the East Side Gallery. Um, lots of cool artwork there. Um, lots of political statements as well. And um, yeah, it was really, really cool. What did you think, Angie? It was really colorful. There was a lot of like abstract ideas going on in like each mural. So you had to like really think about them when you looked at them, which was intriguing. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that you really um, need to take a little bit of time just to see it all and really take it all in but I think now we are gonna warm up it's so cold outside right now um, and take a small little coffee break at Starbucks where I work yeah and then after that I think we're gonna take the subway and head over to Brandenburg Gate this is the must-see tourist attraction if you're here in Berlin so let's get ready to go after our Starbucks break it was time to head back on the road well, the subway actually. But to be honest, the subway system here was really great. It took me a bit of time to figure it out at first, but once I did, it was solid and a very easy way to move through the city. I think I paid about 7 euros for an all day pass through their main public transportation system and it was just the best way to get around in order to see all the cool sights. Once we were back outside, we decided to do a bit of exploring on our way to Brandenburg Gate. So we stopped to look at some of the beautiful sites and I was immediately impressed by their modern architecture. Everything just seemed so organized and structured with an added touch of modern, which really made this eclectic city stand out to me. The streets were clean and traffic seemed normal while trying to get to our destination. And soon enough, we reached tourist attraction number two, the Brandenburg Gate. First of all, let me tell you, it was huge, but it wasn't the size of the structure that really impressed me, but the way the light hit the top of the statue of the angel riding the chariot. It was so freaking cool. There was so much history here, and to see an image of freedom shining upon the city really brought home the meaning of Berlin. So uh, you guys got to see the Brandenburg Gate. That was really, really cool, uh, really big, tons of people there. It was really pretty. I mean, it's like, it's obviously just like a really cool thing to see. Yeah, really good for photo ops too. So if you guys get the chance, go. Right now we're gonna go uh, to the 
uh, memorial of the murdered Jews. It's like this really cool maze thing. Um, well, it's not really a maze, but it kind of looks like that because they've got like these stone slabs just placed upon there and then you can just like go inside. So um, yeah, come check it out with us guys. If you've ever seen the Maze Runner, that's kind of what it looks like from bird's eye view. Only two blocks away from Brandenburg Gate, we headed to tourist stop number three, the Memorial to the Murdered Jews of Europe, also known as the Holocaust Memorial. This architectural masterpiece is a visual representation of the approximate 3 million Jewish Holocaust victims. A pretty haunting memory, you can head inside and explore the different levels. You'll find people at the other end of the memorial just walking through, which makes for a pretty interesting visit. All right, so this is the memorial to the murdered Jews and it's really cool because it's kind of like a maze, like you can get lost. As you can tell, it is freezing outside, so I think we're probably going to be done here in a second. Um, what did you think, Angie? It's really cool. I like how there's like different levels of each little block. Um, it just looks really cool. Yeah, you can go in. There's, there were like kids playing tag. Um, it's just a really cool place. You don't need to spend a lot of time here, though. Um, I think we're going to warm up first. We're probably going to get another tea. After our tea time, we headed directly to our fourth destination, the Reichstag building. I'm not sure that you can book this one online, so I just went directly there where I had to wait for them to give me a time available for that day. Entrance was free, but our scheduled time was much later, so we finally got in at around 6pm. It was crazy getting into this place. Literally, there were sliding doors which we had to wait for security to finally open. Inside, it was definitely cool and the ceiling was so high. We had to wait for a group to come downstairs in order to take the elevator up. But finally, we arrived to the main part where there were plenty of friendly staff members ready to hand out the free audio guide. There were so many languages available. They were definitely prepared. This building is located by Brandenburg Gate and the Holocaust Memorial, but it'll take you the longest to see. The inside of the dome is incredible with its futuristic and modern architecture. It was simply beautiful and it was definitely a plus that you got the free audio guide with it. What was so cool about it was that the audio guide was in sync with the main platform so that it guided you as you walked upwards. It would tell you exactly what buildings to look at and the significance of each one while giving you a bit of history. Unfortunately for us, it was a bit out dark outside, so we really couldn't see that well. It's probably best to come a little earlier to get a really good look at the city. All in all though, it was a really impressive structure. And as we exited, I took one last glance at the building from the outside. It was kind of deceptive since you wouldn't think such an amazing and modern piece of architecture would be waiting at the top. Hey travelers, welcome back. We just got done with the Reichstag building and it was pretty epic. I would say the architecture was the highlight for me. I really liked the view that you could see of the city and they have like an audio tour which is really cool. It's I do suggest though, however, to go maybe a little earlier in the day because a lot of the times they were talking um, and they are saying you can see this building and it was hard to tell the colors because it was so dark and it's for free. You just have to go and uh, sign up for the time. So I highly suggest that you guys try and do that. And now I think that we're actually going to try some pastries. Um, these are typical German pastries. Um, as you can see here, they're on the table and they look so good. I'm really excited. Angie got this, um, it's like a strudel thing. And I got a plum crumb cake kind of deal. They are delicious, so let's try it. Okay, so I'm gonna try my pastry that I got. It has crumbs on it, it looks really delicious. Here I go. really good. The crumbs are really delicious and sweet. The glaze is really nice. That's all I've got. 
Okay, so now it's my turn to try this. It's kind of like, um, looks like a cake, and then it's got plum, cobbler, and then it's topped off with crumbs. Um, which I don't know if you've ever had crumb cakes, but it's a lot like that. And I'm absolutely in love with it. So let's try it. Mm. Oh my gosh. So good. So the plum actually kind of isn't very sweet. So it kind of takes away a little bit from the sweetness of the crumbs. And it's it all comes together with this dough that's so soft from the cake part. So good. <laughs> okay, so the camera almost fell. I, I was about to start um, talking to you guys and now I'm really lopsided. But um, the thing is, I think <laughs> we're just gonna finish our pastries and then possibly go up to the TV tower. Um, this is one of Berlin's most famous historic iconic buildings. It's actually the tallest structure in all of Europe. And um, if it's open, we're gonna go in. We wanted to see the victory column, but we just didn't have enough time. It was dark, it was cold. And so we wanted to warm up and eat some pastries. So let's finish this up and we'll see you at the tower. After finishing our tasty treats, we headed towards Alexanderplatz in order to get to our final destination for the night, the TV tower. We headed inside to buy our tickets and for 14 euros, you can head up to the very top. It is 328 meters tall and is the fourth tallest freestanding structure in Europe. Okay, so we made it. We're here at the TV tower. We're about to um, get in there. It says no cameras are allowed, but we're gonna be sneaky about it. And um, hopefully we'll get through, but I mean, just check this out. This is the entrance. Pretty cool, right? And up we went. The elevator made my ears pop, but when we got to the top, the sight was pretty incredible. You could see the whole city at night, and the lights were so bright. There was a bar where you can chill out and have a drink while enjoying the views, and head up to the second floor to eat at their private restaurant. I don't know if it's better to come during the day because with the purple lights at the bar, the mood of Berlin at night was really starting to come to life. We had yet to try our German beer, so what better time than when being at the top of the TV tower? With my Berliner hand, it was time to celebrate. We are actually gonna get some beer here at the bar. Um, it's typical German beer, um, it's called Berliner. And uh, prices weren't too terrible. I think you can afford at least one beer while you're up here. Cheers! So, I got a Berliner twice, and it has raspberry syrup. It's pink. It's really cute. Looks delicious. So, I think we're gonna drink it now. Cheers! Oh my gosh, this is so good. If you think you aren't gonna like it because you don't like beer, then get over yourself because it's delicious. But as we finished our beer, it was getting late and we had a busy day coming up. So we decided to call it a night and head back to the hostel. This was just day one. There was still a lot more to come. Hey guys, so we just got done with the TV tower. You kind of got a glimpse of Berlin today. Um, but we're calling it an early night, so. But stay tuned, because tomorrow's another day. Yeah, so um, we'll catch up with you then. This is Nomad, I'm signing out. See, See ya. ya. Like my videos? Subscribe for more.